Lace them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with Trey. 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 We're digging in with Trip today, yeah. Well, welcome to another edition of uh, Digging In. And, um, well, you guys, uh, the listeners, the viewers, you're the ones who make it go. So I want to really encourage, borderline beg you, to continue to rate and review us. How are we doing? How can we get better? Um, we're going to have a couple of questions on this particular episode. You guys have had an abundance of great ones. So keep those things coming in and uh, we will try to get to them as many, to, to as many of them as possible. Um, this is going to be such a fun episode. Um, Brett Pesci, the great Brett Pesci coming back from shoulder surgery. Uh, no secret. He's one of my favorite hurricanes on and off the ice. So presented by, and we'll talk more about, New Country Auto Group with Pesh here in the middle of this episode. New Country Auto Group presenting Digging In with Brett Pesci. Well, this guy, anybody that watches our Hurricanes broadcast closely from his first game in San Jose, it's no secret. He, he's one of my favorites. He had me at hello. But now what he wants is he wants all of our new swag, our merchandise. So I ask the great. Brett Pesci, Pesh, if you want that merchandise, you want to elevate your swag, how do you define digging in? Um, yeah, I would, I would say uh, pushing yourself um, to, the, you know, to your highest expectations um, mentally and also physically. And um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. Just, just never, never really saying never really giving up that's about it i i remember it you know we you and i spent some time together in banff after you know you're having a great trip out west you shut out uh, calgary on a saturday afternoon and you and i were in snowy banff yeah. and dean chanel who runs the defense one of roddy's assistants he looked at me with his spectacles and he said <laughs> i'm telling you he said i'm telling you Brett Pesci is the most underrated defenseman in the National Hockey League, and I concur. What I need to know right now is how are you doing? How's the rehab uh, been going? Give us a, a, a status. I'm doing really good, Tripper. Um, thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done with rehab. Um, I think I, I just hit the six-month mark post-surgery um, last week, so that was an exciting time. But, yeah, I'm full-blown in the gym. Um, I'm skating twice a week. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get as strong as possible and just kind of waiting to see uh you know when what when we're gonna start next year. And I'm I'm just really anxious to get going just because it's been so long for me. Now that you're post rehab, what was the hardest part right from the knife or however they did the surgery uh to where you're at right now? Yeah, yeah, you know what it probably I would say uh month two to three. Um but, you know when my rehab specialist kind of had to start moving my shoulder and um, pretty uncomfortable ways uh, just to kind of get that range of motion back. That was uh, pretty painful at times. Um, but obviously I'm glad he did it because um, it's, it's feeling, feeling better than ever. You're not going to believe this. And we're not going to get into it, but I have that same problem on this shoulder right now from an angling injury. You and I, well, I don't know if you're my caliber of angler, but my elusive swordfish <laughs> I, I had to get a cortisone shot. I mean, I got no, I, I can't eat from certain spots. I got to, I'm going to have to get some advice from you, my brother, how I get that flexibility back. <laughs> I mean, that's problems. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I mean, I don't want to tackle a swordfish, <laughs> trust me. Well, that's what happens, uh, Pesh, when you, you, you fish at 1,750 feet. I mean, yeah. the squid we're using for bait, we got LED lights and some people use electric reels. We don't. Okay, we dig in. Um, <laughs> what you grew up a Ranger fan, you know, and then playing the Boston Bruins in the Eastern Conference Finals, I would think it was unimaginably hard to watch the boys dig in 
and have to do it uh, from afar. Can you tell me about that experience? Because my gosh, you were missed, my partner. Yeah, um, yeah, you know what? It, it was tough. Um, a, lot, a lot of the games, obviously, I watched, but it, you know, it, it's tough to watch. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm rooting for the boys, and um, obviously, there were there was hopes that obviously we advanced. I I, I could have maybe played, but um, just to just to not not be out there. Um, I mean, through, through ups and downs, through wins and losses, it's it's a roller coaster. And and when you when you go through that, when you go through the pain and the joy together as a team, um, it makes you stronger. And, and you know that's that's one of the the best things about ho- hockey, in my opinion. You really grow a you know a, a brotherhood um, with your teammates, and, and you grow from it. And and they become lifelong friends. And and you know, obviously the, the bubble, um, I, I think is a one-time experience, hopefully. Um, it, it was tough for me to, to sit on the sidelines, but, um, it is what it is. And, and I'm just looking forward to next year. You know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about late in regulation and overtime against Washington, a heavy team. Yeah. I mean, how seamless you were. I mean, seamless. And it, uh, that's why it's always been a pleasure to, to call your games. Now, why hockey, Pesh? Let's let's you know what let's let's go back in time. Why did you choose hockey at what age? Yeah, you know what? My dad threw me and me and my two brothers out on the ice when we were about three years old. Um, I mean, I, I played other sports. I played baseball, lacrosse. Um, you know, hockey was just always my passion, and I and I knew that. Um, you know, you can ask my father and my mother that. They, they, when I was younger, um, I used to cry when they would try to take me off the ice. Um, so yeah, it, it's just, it's just a love that I've had for as long as I can remember. And then you get drafted. I mean, you're from, uh, you know, Terrytown, New York, but right. I mean, you played for, you know, some of your youth hockey in Jersey, you yep. get, you get drafted in Jersey. I mean, this is pretty darn close to the script. Mm-hmm. Did you know you were going to go to Carolina there early in the third round? No, um, you know what? I, I had no idea to be honest. To be honest with you, I thought I was gonna go to uh, to, to LA. Um, oh, thank speaking, God you didn't go to La La. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking to their scouts and stuff. Um, yeah, it just seemed like they were they were probably the most interested team. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't be more happy to, to have been drafted uh, by Carolina. I call Carolina my home now. Um, and I just love it all around. I love, I love the fans, the city, um, obviously the, the players, the team, the coaching staff, you know, every, everyone top to bottom. It's just an amazing place to be. Is that, you know, he's got some questions for you later in the show. Speaking of, you know, that maybe the Kings were going to take you at that, at that time, uh, a guy named JW was playing for the Kings. Have you ever told him that? I mean, is that why you put one off his face? No. Uh, you know, just <laughs> In Florida. <laughs> that hey, was not a muffin, by the way. Yeah, that's a goal for JW. I mean, the goal's <laughs> yeah. a goal. You got to ask him. But uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh man, I want to get to that. Uh, your underrated shot in offense as, as we unfold, but we're still in the adolescent stage of life for the past now teenage years. Um, what made you? I, I assume you were always going college. And tell me if I'm wrong on that. And then why was UNH the choice? Who else was in the mix? Uh, yeah, I always knew I, I wanted to go to school. Um, my parents, my family, and myself, we, we were big on education. Um, you know, my dad's side, no, no, none of my relatives really went to college. So um, it was important for him and my mother for me to at least get some school years in. Obviously, I didn't expect when I was going to sign early. Um, but yeah. Um, I, I loved UNH. I, I visited when I was, I think I was 15. Um, what was I, a, a sophomore in high junior in high school. And, uh, I just fell in love with the campus. Um, from what the coaching staff said, it was Dick Humilia at the time and Scott Warwick, um, who actually took me on my tour and, um, you know, they seemed like they really believed in me. And, uh, you know, I was a young raw kid at the time. Um, I didn't have many other any other, many other colleges kind of in the mix. I visited BU and BC, but, um, UNH kind of, you know, seemed like they really, really believed in me. And that was, that was big for me as a kid, you know, hearing these, 
you know, obviously I, I know who Dickie Millie was. He's a legendary college coach. And, uh, you know, for him to kind of speak about how, how he thinks, how far I can go in this game, and, you know, it paid dividends. Head coach, the legend, Dick Humili. He he recruited me. They actually, I don't know what they were thinking, but they gave me an offer. Uh, and it should have been a wildcat I, trip. Oh, you know why I wanted to be? Hot girls. Holy <laughs> yeah. cow. <laughs> and You're not so wrong I, about I, that. No, and I'm going to digress for a second because you know what I think of you. But, you know, I think that Amy, your longtime girlfriend, is out of your league. She's a wildcat. <laughs> Uh, Romeo, how did you meet her? <laughs> oh man, she's gonna love this. Uh, <laughs> I, you know what? I got introduced uh, by one of my my teammates uh, my freshman year. Um, we were kind of friends in the beginning, and then uh, yeah, you know, we kind of were on and off for a bit. Um, yeah, now and then we kind of got serious my last year of school. So um, she's still sticking around. She's digging in. Uh, she's digging I'm a huge in. fan. You know, you, uh, the three of us, along with some others, um, what was it, last January, we, we experienced a flight down to Miami. Yep. And you, yes, had, you, you had dug in the <laughs> night before. Hey, listen, talk about a guy that plays with grit when needed. Who had, you had dropped the gloves with who? Mark Shifley? Yeah. Was it Shifley? It yeah. Was Shifley. And one of the linesmen. And one of the linesmen yeah. was sitting next to us in the plane. This. Oh, my God. And he was, I mean, he clearly, he was pulling. I mean, he was very... He had great admiration uh, for you, Ash. And it wasn't like you. Who was it? Was Mrazic playing that night, Pietro? Yep. I mean, yep. yeah, and it was late in the game, and you decided to drop the gloves. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, if you ask Peter, he instigated it. Um, he's always out there instigating. You know, he's 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 the kind of goal. He's just giving shots in the back of the legs, and then the guy turns around, and then here I am in front of him, got to protect him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, you know what? It was – I remember we were up, we were up uh, a few goals right at the end. And, uh, yep. um, he gave me a, he gave me a nice whack. Um, and it was like, I think it was like a minute left, two minutes left. And, you know, it's just kind of unnecessary. And yeah, I mean, I turned around and I asked him, asked him to go. And then it just kind of, you know, it just kind of went flying. It was, it was fun though. I had a good time. I was, I almost came out of the booth. Cause I mean, I knew, <laughs> I, I, I knew that I was on your plane. OK, the next day with the great Amy. All right. And Fleurs was on that bird. Yeah. Uh, Edmondson, Aho, yes. Dezingle. I mean, we yeah. all we had a it was a, yeah. it was a riot of a flight. And the linesman, <laughs> we didn't know the linesman was going to be. Yeah, that's right. And and I'm sitting there and it was a great win. I think Willie J.W. had a had a heck of a game. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking Pesh could just cruise into the all star slash Olympic break, and you, I mean, you didn't have to do it, and you did it. That's why I almost came out of the booth. So, <laughs> in a different kind of way, how would you define heavy defense, gritty defense? Because I think that's, that's a part of your game that you don't necessarily think of. That's a wrinkle when need be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I think of those words, it's not, you know, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily you gotta go out there and fight a guy want it a lot but um you know when the time comes and and you got to answer the bell you do and it's on top of that just just being physical in front of your goalie um you know boxing out around the blue paint um just really it's really just goes down to just helping helping your goalie out there and um that's what i try to pride myself on is is you know letting peter james kind of see as many shots as possible and just giving them the best opportunity to save the puck. Um, you know, obviously I'll block a shot if I have to, but um, at the end of the day, it, you know, it's their job to do that. And, you know, obviously if you're, if you're an NHL goalie, you see a puck 90, what 95% of the time you're going to, you're going to, mm -hmm. they're going to save it. So yeah. that's what I try to do as a defenseman. And I, and I consider that as gritty because, you know, you're always in a guy's face. You're always, you're always getting physical with him in front of the net. And, 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 and I think that that's huge for a defenseman these days. Yeah, and you're willing to pay the price when it comes to blocking shots, too. I, I think of so many examples of that. You blocked a shot that Sunday afternoon game against uh, Edmonton, and I was really fearful because, you know, you, you left the ice bleeding, you came back, finished the game. Hey, was that – I think that was right before the mom's trip. So was Alicia yeah. – was she, was she in the stands during all of that? 
No, thank God she wasn't. She she was actually coming to meet us the day after, I believe. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think she would have been balling. <laughs> What, how would you, because I've been very fortunate to get to know both of your parents quite well. Of course, one of your two brothers, Bradley, who should be running for, I think, he should be in debates right now running for the Oval <laughs> Office. Um, if you were to tell me the part of both of your parents that you're most proud of and that's part of you, what would you say? Um, my father, I, I, would, I would definitely say his, uh, his loyalty. I mean... You know, he, he would just, I mean, he's just, he would do anything for us. And, um, he, you know, anything we needed growing up, he, he's there. And, um, you know, he, he taught us some, some valuable lessons growing up and, and so it wasn't all easy, right? Like, you know, if we got in trouble, you know, we're getting, we're getting grounded and, but, you know, he, he did a good job of, of telling us why we were grounded, um, and, and kind of just made us a better person. It kind of showed us, showed me what was right and wrong. Um, and my mother, she's just so kind. Um, she's got, she's got the biggest heart uh, I know. And, you know, she, she's another one. She just, she does anything for her kids and, and she's just so nice to everyone. And, um, you know, I, it takes a special person to be like that, you know? I think she has grit too. And I'll tell you a story. <laughs> I was, uh, Oh yeah. I was, uh, I was doing a bench interview at, uh, I would think as fun of a rink as because you grew up a Ranger fan at Madison square garden. So then I've got to get up to the booth uh, with all their renovations. So I usually just walk through the lower bowl and she and your grandmother during warmups, you know, they were four or five rows up. I almost missed, um, you know, my, my later segments in the pregame show, because I, I feel in some ways that I'm, a, I'm an honorary Pesci. And we sat there and we were passionate. I mean, passionate talking about things. And so I, yes, I think she does have a lot of grit. And I think with regards to camaraderie on the mom's trip, I think she proved in Nashville that, uh, and in previous mom's trips that, that she's a centerpiece. <laughs> yeah. She, she, she talks to anyone. She, you know, she's the type of girl you gotta, you know, you gotta just kind of walk away because she'll, she'll talk to you all day. I almost missed the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And and I mentioned your brother Bradley, one of two brothers. Yeah, he had me at hello. It was an interview he did at Barclays Center. You were playing the Islanders. I remember. And I swear, I mean, you want to talk about a guy that has the gift of gab, but with substance. What's the age difference there? I mean, who's who? Because he acts like he is the mentor. I mean, he said I think in Nashville or was no, it wasn't Nashville. It was in the Florida Dallas dad trip. So he came and he talked about how proud he is of you. How yeah. proud, like, I mean, has he, has he taken you under his wing his entire career? Oh yeah. I, I mean, we, so we only, he's only two years older than me. I and mean, then my youngest is Adam, who's three years younger than me. Um, yeah, he, he's someone I've always looked up to. Um, I value his opinion, you know, any, any problem I have, I'm going to go to him first. Um, so he's definitely one of my, one of my idols and uh, growing up and, and to this day, and, you know, like, like you said, you know, he, he just always tell me how proud he is of me and, and, and how crazy it is that I'm here and how, you know, how blessed we all are. And, um, it just puts thing in, things into perspective. Um, he, he's just my, uh, my ultimate fan and, and it's good knowing that you have someone like that on your back. Great answer that requires, uh, elaboration and another wrinkle. What are both your bros doing right now? So they're working, uh, they're actually working together. They're trying to, uh, they're starting their own business. It is a, uh, streaming, streaming designs. Um, so right now it's for gamers. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Twitch and, and those gaming, uh, apps that you, you stream, stream on, but, um, right now they're starting with that and then they're going to ultimately try to grow it to any kind of businesses that they want. Um, yeah, it's going well for them. They're making some good money. They're actually living with me right now. Um, I have a little apartment in my town, um, and Amy's here as well. So we got a full house, but uh, they're doing well. Everyone's happy and, and staying safe, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, I'll make sure our producer, Adam, the Admiral Holtzman, uh, that we give a big-time <laughs> shout-out. Uh, Admiral, are you there? Can you do that uh, for the, the Pesci brothers and uh, their, their endeavor? 100%, buddy. <laughs> that's what I like. To, that's what I like to hear. You see how prompt that was? No hesitation. Yes, 
Pesh. Okay. Who was your favorite roommate, college pro? And the person that's asking this question says there's only one answer. Yep. TBR. <laughs> uh, Trevor, uh, I mean, he's one, you know, we had a pretty close group at UNH. Um, Trevor, I was roommates with him. And um, yeah, he, him and the, a guy named Colin McDonald, who's I consider one of my best buddies as well. So, um, yeah, I'll go. With, I'll go with Trev. He's he's one of my one of my best buddies to this day, and um, it's awesome that uh, that he's been around with Carolina, and I'm hope, hopefully he's back. Um, yeah, he's just a, he's just a great all around guy, and he's one of the best best around for sure. I totally agree with that, and all the boys, including the great TVR, as we tape are digging in somewhere on a golf course in Boston, I believe. And this question comes from them. <laughs> oh, God. What? <laughs> <laughs> what was the story before practice with the dairy bar at the lunch hour before practice? Well, I mean, what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's actually really funny um no so dairy bar was just a uh it was just like a little restaurant uh it was like a little deli so to speak uh right 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 next to the whittemore center which is obviously the name of the unh rink um but yeah pretty much before every practice i would i would go in and you know i was a kid at the time i, I eat different now but i would eat, usually order uh you know two grilled cheeses with bacon and <laughs> <laughs> or a turkey club it. yeah yeah i mean like i was hungry and and dairy bar was my spot i think if you ask anyone who i went to school with they would say that and you know um i was on first name basis with all the uh you know the people working um yeah that that's pretty much it that's the story how far be how long before practice would you have your grilled cheese and oh god that sounds good oh uh, how long good. before practice at the dairy bar <laughs> Um, you know, right after class, um, it changed every semester just cause you yeah, obviously even new classes, but sometimes it'd be, you know, 45 minutes and I'm rushing. I had to go to dairy bar though. You know, I, I needed my, I needed my fuel and I needed my grilled cheese. <laughs> yeah. But you didn't, you know, especially you load up with a grilled cheese and bacon. You never had any lower GI distress in the middle of practice where you had to say, Hey coach, you Millie. I got to get out of here for a minute. <laughs> you know what, Tripper, it happened I did? to Roberto Luongo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did, but like you say, you got to dig in, and I got to grind you, through it. Yeah, you have to do it. <laughs> have to do it. And I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to give you this pearl. A friend of mine who used to be a Michigan State football player, God rest his soul, his name was Mike White. And he once gave me an unbelievable pearl, Pesh. And I'll mention it and we'll move on. He said, Trip, never, and I mean never, trust a fart. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's words of wisdom right there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. So if you take one thing from digging in, never, never trust, trust a, fart. a fart. Got it. Okay. But, but you trusted yourself after three years. Um, can you um, tell me where you were at the council and the ultimate decision to leave UNH and uh, begin your pro career? Yeah, you know what? I, I was just in my room. Um, it, that was honestly was maybe the hardest decision I've ever had um, to make in my life. Like I, I loved school so much. Um, you know, I had my buddies there, obviously like my, my lifelong friends now. And um, you know, I, I, I had Amy there and, um, I, I just loved it. Um, I loved everything about UNH and, um, but you know what? I'm, I'm glad I made my decision because I, I, I thought I was ready, um, to leave and, and I was excited to, to, to become pro because I thought, you know, I, I think I could ultimately play in the national hockey league and, and why wait a year when I can kind of jump in and, and prove myself for myself now. So, um, yeah, that was the decision. I remember speaking to you, Millie, which was, which was a tough conversation for sure. Um, but he's such a good guy. He was so happy for me. You know, he shook my hand and obviously said, I'm rooting for you. And, and when I remember, he remember telling you earlier, he was like, you know, I told you how far you're going to go and it, it's not going to be soon before you you're in the national hockey league. And, and that's a pretty, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, I'll still always remember it to this day. 
Did you, what number did you wear at UNH? 22. Why 22 and why, t- you know, it's a great number, but why for the great patch? Um, you know what? My, my father just wore 22 growing up. Um, uh, and you know, my, my brothers wore it. We all, we all just wore it. Um, and it just kind of now, it's just kind of a family number. So, um, it, it's, uh, it feels weird not wearing it. Great story. Shame on me if I've never asked you that question before. It's sort of my job. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I now, but I uh, usually I say I say I have an el- a memory like an elephant. Maybe I think it's just at times. So I remember you come in for some playoff games in sh- in Charlotte, yep. um, and then the next year, a guy uh, named a right shot like you, James Wisniewski, goes down knee injury. I want to say first shift in our first game in Nashville, yeah. and I'm a big proponent of natural sides. We will get into that. So it wasn't more than a few games after that was Newski was tough for him. James is a good guy that he was, he was, he was, he was done. He was out for a long time. It was a Saturday night in San Jose. San Jose was an elite team in the league and you jumped in and played marvelously. I marvelously. Can, were you nervous at all? I mean, cause that was a tough opponent, tough building to break mm-hmm. into the league. Yeah. Um, I was, I was nervous for sure. Um, and to be honest, I don't get nervous too often. Um, that was, that was one of the more nervous, uh, nerve wracking times I've been through, but you know, it was, it was fun though. It's you're excited and you got the jitters and, um, I'll never forget seeing, uh, you know, it kind of just felt like a blur. And then you're seeing Joe Thornton out there zipping the puck around on the power play. And you're like, wow, like this is, this is real. Like you're in this, um, so yeah, that, that, that's a cool moment. Obviously I'll, I'll never forget it. So. And I believe then we came here to my hometown of Detroit, Detroit yeah. and that was your second game because the owner, majority owner at the time was Pete Carmanis and Pete Carmanis came up to me, hockey hall of famer. And he said, Whoa, <laughs> this pesh. <laughs> Cause he had watched the game in San Jose. By the time you got to Detroit, were the nerves gone? And, and did you know, that without question it had been validated that you could be a difference maker in the national hockey league. Uh, yeah, not, not yet. To be honest, I think I was still running on adrenaline. Um, you know, the next, the next night I played Datsuk or so I'm just like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is pretty crazy, but no, I, you know what though? I, the second game I, I kind of was actually getting a little more comfortable and I was like, you know what? Hmm, like maybe I can kind of hold my own in this league and, and keep up with these, these legends. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was a cool feeling, but yeah, it didn't take long too long to get acclimated. If you had to pick three guys, okay, I is, I'm guessing they'll probably be forwards, but they could be a defenseman who likes to jump into the rush. You just mentioned uh, Jumbo Joe and Pavel Dodsuk, the magician, that have been the hardest to be able to defend from then until now. Who would those three be? that's a good question um i, yeah, I try gonna, to ask good questions that's a good question Trev. you're a smart guy so i expect that question out of you um you know what i, I i'll probably go with uh nathan mckinnon who's obviously a, a special player um cindy crosby and uh you know patrice bergeron or not bergeron uh brad marchand he's 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 tough for sure Okay, let's start uh, from the top. Uniquely, why is McKinnon, why does he reach your final three? So fast, so powerful. Um, he's got a great hand. I mean, he, you know, if he, you're not going to find anything really wrong with that guy, right? I mean, he's got no flaws in his game. And, and obviously, you know, he, in my opinion, he's, he, he's going to go down as one of the greatest, greatest forwards to play the game. Um, yeah, I mean, just one. I'd probably say that his biggest attribute is just his blazing speed. I mean, you see him on the power. I'm on the kill, and he gets that big drop pass, you know, and he's flying. You're just like, how, how am I supposed to hold the line with this guy coming at me? This <laughs> this, this, mo- this moose. <laughs> like, so yeah, he's he's unreal. <laughs> you know what? I just had because obviously, place in Colorado. I just had some friends that unsuccessfully were trying to hunt moose in Colorado. <laughs> and, uh, 
And now I'm thinking to myself, thank God when he's coming at you with all that speed, you're not fresh off a of grilled cheese and bacon from the dairy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I changed my diet. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, what about Sydney? Yeah, he, uh, you're probably not going to find better a guy with better edge work in the league. Um, so him, him is more just just him in the corners, um, his cutbacks, and and the way. He, I don't think anyone anyone you know controls the puck like he does, and he's just so strong on his skates. It's you know when he when he's buzzing down there in the corner, he, I don't. It's almost like you're not going to take the puck away, but you kind of just have to keep him to the outside. Um, so yeah, he he he's obviously arguably the greatest player to ever play the game. Um, one of them at least. So yeah, he speaks, you know, his name speaks for itself. And by the way, uh, since you're well on your way to getting some of that dig in swag, the hats, he has had a hand in the design. Sydney oh, has really, well, he enjoys his hat. So I figured I'd, <laughs> I'd reach out and I'd reach out and, you know, ask him, you know, what do you think? He seems to really like the darker colors. So, uh, you know, he's had a hand in it along with uh, the great Briley Brindamore, uh, like your brothers involved in design. So you're well on your way to receiving those on the house as Exciting. one of our favorite guests. What about speaking of a guy that probably won't receive any of that swag, although I have the same admiration for his game, Marshan. Why is this guy good? AKA Toucan Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's, you know, he's just. He's another guy. He's so strong on his skates. And I think his biggest, the bit, the hardest thing about him to defend is, is, you know, he's just so slippery and he's so shifty. And um, he's, he's so, he's got that long stick too. You know, he, he, he's so good at pickpocketing guys and you always got to be aware and he's just hard. He's just hard to tame. And, and I've had, I think I've personally had some trouble with him in the past. And um, you know, it's just, you kind of, sometimes you just got to tip your hat. And and he's yeah. one of those guys where I just tip my hat to, to be honest. Who I, I mean, I know that Marchand does. Um, would you say you're a guy? Can you deliver a good one liner on the ice during a game, uh, during your shift from the bench? Do you typically stay away from it? And and who would be the best chirper on the Hurricanes roster right now? Oh, well, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I stay away from it pretty much um, just because I'm, I'm not that witty. So <laughs> I'll probably lose in one of those little chirp battles. But uh, huh, who's the best chirper? Um, it's actually a really good question, Trip. I, I, I always hear I always hear Dezingle giving little jabs to guys. I'd say I, I'd go with him. He's, he's pretty funny out there. Who are some of the best in the league? Oof. Um, yeah, I mean Marshawn's obviously up there. He's always running his mouth. Um, another guy <laughs> uh, who is uh, he's on Philly. You know Travis Konechny. He's kind of a uh, he's kind of a little chirper out there. I think <laughs> I think it was this time uh, or what was it? We played whatever it was last year. Obviously, I played with Jake Gardner a good amount and. He called him a uh, called him a space cadet because he's got that big helmet and the, yeah. and the massive head all up to Jake. But he, everyone knows he's got a big head. Um, so yeah, that, I was we got a we both got a nice chuckle after that in between periods. You know what? The great guards <laughs> does have a little bit of that headgear that we scream. <laughs> What one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. He's got that astronaut look. Yes, he does. <laughs> Speaking of those days, you know, not when, not when the great Neil Armstrong, big Kaniac walked on the moon, but who was your favorite? Uh, was it a Ranger, your favorite player? Was it a defenseman? I know the Rangers were your favorite team. Who were your favorite? Who was your favorite player or players growing up? Yeah, I, I liked, uh, yeah, obviously I grew up a big Ranger fan. So um, I like Brian Leach a lot. And then obviously when I, when I got a little older, when the Rangers were going on those cup runs, I, I loved watching uh, Ryan McDonough play. Um, obviously he's not that much older than me, but um, he, he's just so steady. And, and, and I kind of try to model my game after, after the way he plays. So, so, yeah. Have you ever had a chance to get to know uh, Ryan McDonough? Cause you, now you're one of his peer, one of uh, his peers. He's reading himself possibly for the Stanley cup finals yeah. one went away. Yeah. Um, no, I actually, I haven't met him, heard good things about him. Um, 
just respect. I just respect the way he plays, and 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 uh, you know, I feel like a lot of those guys don't get as much uh, as much credit as I think they should. So, are you watching? Uh, you know, whether it be Dallas uh, emerging uh, against uh, Vegas or the Islanders in Tampa at three two, are you watching hockey closely right now? Um, I'll, you know, not too closely to be honest. That uh, uh, it's kind of tough when you know. Yeah. Um, your team's out and I mean, I didn't even play in this year and, and it's still tough to watch. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on for a period, but that, that's about it. Yeah. I, I, I tend to be, I get it. Cause I was right there as your broadcaster right in the trenches with you right. when you, you went to the Eastern conference finals. Um, okay. We're going to take, I've got to find this here, uh, just an intermission, but it's going to be a live intermission. And we are going to give a big shout out to, our presenting sponsor, New Country Auto Group. And Pash, this comes from Jared Cantanucci, uh, former Harvard hockey player, a.k.a. the Nooch. And he wanted me to tell you, okay, right near you in Terrytown, he's got an Audi in Hawthorne five minutes away. He's got a Porsche and an mm. Audi in Greenwich 15 minutes away. He's got the Wide World Ferrari BMW 20 minutes away. Toyota Lexus West Point, 30 minutes away. Why aren't you digging in at New Country Auto Group? And if you did, which one of those vehicle brands do you think you'd go with? Oh, wow. There's some cool cars. Um, what Porsche did you say? Uh, you say Porsche? He's got, well, oh, yeah, you got Porsche in there. The Porsche is, uh, that's in Greenwich, 15 minutes away. Yeah. New I'd Country go, Auto Group. Uh, I'd, I, like the, I like Porsches, so I, I guess I go with that. Cool. Why could you see yourself in that type of sled? 22 in a Porsche. I just think they're, you know, it, it's just a very well-respected car. Any of them, it's, uh, it, they're, they're all, they're all kind of beasts. And, uh, you know, just when you hear Porsche, you know, you, you know, you're getting uh, the cream of the crop. And I can tell you this, Pesh, as uh, we move on to the second half of our episode, if you ever elect to get a Porsche from New Country Auto Group, they're the finest group in the country. You ever have a problem, they'll dig in with you. They make every customer feel like uh, that customer is a number one. They'll make 22, the great Pesh, feel like he is number one. So that's something to think about. Let that marinate. And uh, yes, I will. you might have to dig in with New Country, my friend. Potentially, yeah. Right up the street. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right up the street. So proximity is not an excuse. Um, you know, I want to set the tone with the second half with a guy that was very influential in the early stages of your career. He was always my, one of my favorites because he could give it out, but he could take it to the great Ron Hainsey. Let's, oh. let's talk about Ron. Dig in with Ron. <laughs> oh, man. What a, uh, what a guy. Uh, <laughs> probably my, if not my favorite, one of, one of my all-time favorite guys I've played with so far growing up from even from you know minor midget to to pro he's he's one of a kind I think you can agree uh anyone that knows Ron he's one of the funniest guys I know and um you know but most importantly he's a hell of a hockey player um yes he's as steady as they come he still is he's what 38 now 38 39 and man he he's he's just unbelievable out there so he's I mean he's, he's still he skates great and he's just he, you know, he, he's always, it seems like he's always one step ahead of the game of the play um, defensively. And I think that's why, you know, he's been in the league for so many years. We just talked about you sliding into a Porsche. I believe Ronnie Hainsey is a Porsche guy. I know he has that in his collection. Um, yeah. How did he help you? Let's just pick one thing in terms of the mechanics of playing defense on the ice. And then, if, if there was one thing, whether it be your mind, preparation, confidence, off the ice. So pick, you know, on the ice, off the ice, Ronnie Hainsey. On the ice, um, just your, your gap control. Um, he was so good at, at, at swallowing plays before they could even happen. Um, and just watching him, obviously, in my, uh, my first few years in the league, um, I just found that so crucial because you know you break up plays when when the, you know it could potentially lead to to a to an odd man rush or wh whatever it may be but um just giving just being in guys faces and, and giving them no time and space just just is obviously i think that might be the number one um 
thing to do for an NHL defenseman in a positive way. Um, and then off the ice, you know, I think he just kind of told me, I remember talking to my first year and, uh, obviously I'd never played 82 games or more, you know, I think I played around 70 or something that year. Um, but yeah, I mean, he told me, you know, you're going to get tired. Um, it's normal. You're not used to this, but, um, just, just try and just try and take, take it day by day. Um, and, and just, just work with that. Obviously, you know, you can get a little overwhelmed your first few years with how long the season is, how many games you play, how many practices, whatever. Um, if you just take it day by day, I've kind of learned that it just kind of sells you down and, and, and just try to enjoy it. And, and that's the number one thing I try to do during the year when times get tough, just, you know, take a step back and just realize where you are and what league you're playing in. And, and you know, it, it usually kind of settles me down. You know, this is why I say that he could give it out, but he could take it too. Early Western Canadian trip and you guys, oh my God, you couldn't hold a third period lead to save your lives. And so no. Ronnie Hainsey, Ronnie Hainsey's getting off the plane. I'm waiting for all the boys to get off. And he comes by and he looks at the top of my dome. He says, wow, trip, what are you doing? You getting highlights? <laughs> are you lightning the and I mean, I'm ticked off about these leads. <laughs> and I turned to him and I said, Ronnie, I said, Ronnie, why don't you bloop, worry about holding a third period lead? And then we'll talk about my follicles. And I mean, I've, <laughs> I'd see, I've seen some players over the years that, you know what, they would have been in hibernation for the next few weeks. Next day, one day at a time, no problem with Ronnie Hainsey. No. That's what I like. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's a legend. And I'll say that. <laughs> He is a true legend. And when he got traded to Pittsburgh, you know, as I used to hear the undercurrent of people would say, I think Ron Hainsey had the most regular season games played in the league without playing a playoff game. And, and I'm like, are, are you people watching the game closely? How well this guy's, how good he is. And he goes in, he was a critical piece. Oh yeah. Pittsburgh winning the Stanley cup. I was so happy for him truly. Cause I really have it. I have all the time in the world for Ron Hainsey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I truly do. Um, Steve Smith, who was running the defense back then, what role did, did he, what influence, uh, early in your career? I, uh, he, he was a good coach, um, uh, for sure. He, he taught me a lot. Um, he, he really, you know, taught me kind of not how to play defense, but he, he would, he always gave me good tips, um, on just how to defend and make it, making it a bit easier on myself. Um, but I, I think the one, the biggest thing that I learned from him is, um, how critical boxing out is, um, he was big on that. And, and you know, in college, I, I never really, to be honest, I never really did it. I never even thought about doing it. I, I would always just kind of maybe just try and get in front of the forward and, and blocking it or whatever, maybe, but, um, as you know, you get older, you learn things and you, you're obviously with the best of the best in terms of coaches. Um, so yeah, I think boxing out was, was something that. You know, he taught me, and I'll take away that obviously for the rest of my career, and and try to only get better each year. Guy you have right now, so you beat Brock scores the double overtime goal, and we stay in Washington. You guys had grabbed a bite to eat. Oh, that was a great bus ride. One of the buses broke oh, down, yeah. so we were all on yeah. one. Right. Uh, we went to our new our new hotel. Dean Chenault running your D. Um, assistant coach to Roddy. He calls me, says, "You want to come to my room?" You know, I was late. And I said, yeah, you know what? So I walk in, there he is in his bathrobe, you know, a couple of drinks, watch the game back. And he's in the robe. He's still got the sun or the, his specs on. And he's like, look at these shifts from Pesh. Seamless, seamless, seamless. <laughs> uh, Dean Chanel, talk about his role. Cause I, I'm a big fan of Dean's. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too. Um, I, I think, I don't think there's a guy in that locker room who's not a big fan of him to be honest, especially the D um, we, we all, you know, he's, he's the real deal in terms of coaching and, and knowing how to coach us. I think that's the visa. He's a hell of a guy. And, um, you know, he's somewhere, you know, we could, you can kind of differentiate hockey and after hockey, um, like after the games, um, if you don't want to talk about hockey, you could just mess around with him a bit. And that that's, I think that's huge. Cause you know, you develop a bond. Um, and he, he's really good at that. Um, at the same time, he teaches you a lot. Um, if you, if you want to go in and, 
and, and watch your clips over and have, you know, have him show you stuff that he's, his door is always open. Um, and, and that's, that's huge for obviously, um, guys like me, I, I personally, I do like watching some film, not too much, but when I want to, um, you know, if I feel like I have a tough game or whatever, I'm going to him and, and he's going to be helping me out with anything he can. And, and, and that goes a long way for, for a player to have a coach, um, who kind of knows, knows he has your back and, and, and has your best interest in hand. When, when you look at what was perhaps lacking in the culture, coaching culture, and what is there, I, I, I just want you to more, more or less, cause you can make the same point. You talk about Dean. Let's talk about Rod. Of course, Jeff Daniels, who I was lucky enough to have a captain when I played in the American Hockey League. How have they changed things, maybe on the ice, in the locker room, the intangibles, in all the, the right ways as a staff? Well, you know what, Tripper? They, uh, they, they, changed, they changed the culture. Um, it's crazy to see how how different it was from when I first, my first few years to when Roddy took over. And, um, you know, if you ask Roddy, he's, he's probably the most selfless guy ever. He's going to say we changed it, but you know, it starts with him. Um, and he taught us, you know, the right way to play, how, you know, how, how to be a pro. And, um, he just, he just, all, all he asked out of us is just to work hard and be respectful and, and you know, treat the game with respect and, and just play for one another. And, it goes such a long way. I mean, I know that's a cliche thing to say, but, um, you know, we bought into it and, and, you know, you saw what we did. And even this year, obviously playoffs two years in a row is I think a pretty good accomplishment. Obviously it's not enough right now, but whatever, we'll get to that later. But um, yeah, it, it, it's just, you know, you, you know, that he, you'd run, a, you run through a wall for that guy. Cause you know, he would do it for you. And if you, listen to any of his interviews um, after games, he, he'll never blame it on him on us. He's always going to take the blame for himself. And when you hear a coach, he's not like, you know, he's not out there. He's coaching us. He's just trying to give us tips to, to win a game. It's, it goes far, you know, it's unbelievable. I, I haven't heard another coach um, kind of be like that. And, and it's just, uh, you know, I truly do feel blessed that, that he's on you know my side and he's our coach. Wow. What an answer. What an answer. I'm for a split second. I'm thinking about, I wish we could combine different chapters of time. Cause I remember calling his games. Um, and I, you know how much I love calling your games is to see you two on the ice together, digging in, killing a penalty. Um, you're two of my favorites. Um, Pesh, I have always thought, okay. And I want you to give me rigorous honesty. I, I still would call you the most underrated defense in the league, whether this wrinkle elevates or not. But I think with your tools, the way you gallop up the ice, I think you gallop. Um, I don't think your shot's a muffin, even though you think it is. Uh, ask, <laughs> Will, ask, Willie, ask Willie's face. Um, <laughs> yeah. do, do, you, do you think in the right way, because I think all the tools are there, that your offensive production contribution can continue to grow? I hope so. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, growing up, that was, and obviously it's different when you get to the NHL, but um, growing up, that was probably the best, you know, the best part of my game was, was my offense. And, and even in college, um, yeah, I, I think it still has room to grow. Um, I work on my shot every year and um, I'm actually, you know, I, I take lessons with, with this uh, local guy near me and we work on my shot and skating, but yeah, um, I, I think that, you know, as the years go on, you gain more confidence, um, confidence in your abilities. You get a little more mature, you get bigger, stronger. And I think that, yeah, that can for sure contribute to my offensive game. And, and for me personally, I do think there's more to give for me. Um, it's just, you know, just going to have to wait and see and just, just keep trying to join the roster and, and uh, obviously defense first, but um, when I get an opportunity and want to obviously make something of it offensively. You know, I said a few minutes ago, because, you know, I was mentioning when James Wisniewski, a fellow righty, got hurt that really was a big part of you getting your first chance and you just carpe yeah. diem'd it. But you have, and I, I talked about how much I like natural sides, but you have excelled not just on the right side, 
but playing with F Justin Falk for a long period of time, playing as a righty on the left side. So if you were to make the argument to me, because you are, for me, the perfect guy to ask, how in all three zones did you acclimate playing on your offside? Um, well, I mean, I think to play in your offside, you got to be confident with, with your backhand. Um, and that's one thing I, act I, I do have confidence in. Um, I feel almost just as comfortable passing the puck on my backhand than I do my fore forehand, to be honest. Um, and I think that's huge, but, um, you know, I do think you do get a little more offense. Um, you could generate a little more offense from your offside. You know, when you're on the point, you get a pass, you're kind of ready in shooting position. Um, and you kind of, as a player, you do feel more comfortable just kind of snapping it off on your opposite side. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind playing either, to be honest. Um, obviously I think you can make a little more plays on your strong side um, just because obviously the puck's always on your, on your forehand, but, um, yeah, I mean, either, either way is fine with me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a lot more than a one trick pony, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Speaking of ponies that, uh, really, you know what, when I look at the horses on the back end, homegrown, slaving, Pashy, Pashy slaving. When was the first time you looked and you said this 74, this slaving, this guy's got a bright future, just like I do. You know, I, I knew well before most people did. <laughs> um, I remember we were actually, uh, we were on a few festival teams growing up um, for the U.S. development, whatever it is, those that little tournament in Rochester. Um, and I remember actually seeing him there and I was like, wow, this, <laughs> this guy's pretty good. And then played him in college a few times and he was, his team wasn't very good, but, you know, he, he was just stood out. And, you know, he didn't belong there. He was, he was unbelievable. And it, it wasn't a surprise to me how well his first training camp went, um, where he was scoring, you know, just excelling. And, and I knew it was only a matter of time. He'd be, he'd be in the NHL and, and, and being a top tier defender in the entire league. Moving up front. Can you remember any little story on the ice, on the bench, or maybe in the locker room, who knows, maybe on the bus, that you could share with, uh, with me that represents what a competitor Sebastian Ajo is? Oh God. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there's not one time it's, uh, I mean, just, just playing cards with him on the plane. Uh, I mean, he's, he's so intense, uh, you know, and you know, he's not one to be very, you know, too, too emotional. Um, but, um, you could tell that he, you know, if he's losing in cards, he's, he's, he's not happy. And, uh, it goes, it goes in anything he does. Um, obviously hockey starting with number one, he's, he, he's the biggest <laughs> critic on himself, I, I think. And, um, you know, I, it, it, he's just such a competitor. And I think that's what, that's why he's such an elite player in the league and he's only getting better. Um, I, the sky's the limit for that kid. And, um, it, it's awesome to know that he, he's on your team. So, yeah. You know, who I'm going to see later on today. I'm going to see the man that has taken the word brother to another uh, level or 10. Andre. Andre. Oh. He, I'm going to see, I'm going to see Spatch. Uh, Cause he's here in Detroit with yep. his brother training already. He's training at five 30 in the morning every day. Yeah, um, so tell me the little things and the big things that, that make this guy, uh, uh, you know, already a star and he could be just mm -hmm. scratching the surface. Oh yeah. That's, that's the thing. He's only scratching the surface. He's, he's already a star. He's, I mean, he's another one. The sky's the limit for that kid. Just so big, so strong. Um, and I think the biggest attribute he has is work ethic. Um, you know, majority of games, we have a home game. He's, if he doesn't like the ways, even if he did like the way he played, he's shooting pucks, he's working out. Um, you can't, he's a kid. You can't even, you can't get him out of the rink. Um, and being such a young kid and having that mindset and, and just wanting to be the best so bad. And um, it, it's awesome to see. And then on top of it, he's, he's one of the nicest kids I know. And he, and, and he's just, he, he's loved by everybody. And it, it's awesome. Another guy to have him on your side. 
he's loved by everybody, but he has no problem chirping the opponent. No. I mean, at least that's my observation. Yeah. No, he's yeah. he's as chippy as them come. He's physical. I mean, he he truly does it all. He really does. I, I mean, I'm I've been considering uh, going and joining those five thirty a.m. workouts because <laughs> I made a promise that I'd get as chiseled as Rod. You know, yeah. Rod is just killing all of us at 50 years old with that little yeah. pose for those <laughs> watching on YouTube at that Toronto Outdoor Stadium. I mean, if I dig in for those 530 workouts with Svetch, I'll be there in no time, don't you? Do you are you betting on me, Pesh? Tripper, I'm, I'm, I'll put all my marbles on you, man. I, I'm, I'll always bet on you, Tripper. <laughs> okay. So Svetch, although like you, I thought the mahi mahi that I saw him catch on Instagram was certainly it. on certainly on the tinier side. Let's just say that. Okay, you your new vessel is it correct that it's called Game Changer? Yes. <laughs> okay, the slaves that came from slaves, and I saw you. But was it? It wasn't on game. Was it on a previous dinghy that you caught that little uh, minnow of a shark that I saw that I rip you about <laughs> all the time? <laughs> no, I caught I, I caught the minnow on the game changer. <laughs> okay, I, you name it game changer because I have to tell you I I like oh no you know what <laughs> it wasn't my uh, it, it just came from the previous owner and I was I was gonna change it um, I haven't thought thought about some but you know and then I realized like you know it's kind of a, it's kind of a funny name and it, it's kind of catchy and, and everyone seems to like it so I was just like you know I'll just roll with it too dude and I never call anybody dude okay if anybody needs to watch hockey and recognize when 22 when Pesci's in the lineup what a game changer he is yeah you got to keep the vessel name that it's perfect all right cuz I've seen the lineup with you I've seen the lineup without you and don't let this go to your melon, but you're a game changer. <laughs> Thank you, Chip. <laughs> hey, by the way, when you when you got hurt, Dave Ayers night, previous dig in guest, the great Dave Ayers. I mean, you're hurt, ended your season, unfortunately. What did you do for the rest of the day? Were you able to appreciate what the heck was going on, even though you were you were done for the night? Oh yeah. I mean, I obviously it was it was tough um for me mentally, but no, I, I was watching the game in the in the that little lounge they got in the guest room, and oh man, it was. I remember I was watching with the Zingle, um, Billy Bill Berniston, and Doug Bennett, or not Doug Bennett, and uh, the goalie coach, our goalie coach Muzz. Um, it, it was just we were all just just eating it up. It was awesome. I mean, we all knew that that's a once in a lifetime thing, and and I couldn't be happier for the guy. He's such a nice guy. Yeah. Um, to have him go through something like that is special, and obviously that's going to change that. That's going to change his life. They're doing a movie about it. I know that. They're doing yeah. a movie. Yeah. It's crazy. He was, uh, yeah, he was a big time digging in guest. They're going through it all. I'm trying to think he said, um, what's his name? Mark Wahlberg might play him. No Ryan way. Reynolds, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. And I, and, and then I mentioned, cause he said, trip, you know, you were broadcast the game. You might get in there. And I, you know, I didn't say this with any type of arrogance, but I thought maybe, you know, Brad Pitt might be a good uh, fit to, yeah, to play yeah, I, the, the color analyst. <laughs> I, I see the similarities there with you, with you and Brad yeah. Pitt. Yeah, we're both legends of the fall. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Pash, if you could, on Game Changer, um, first of all, this again comes from slaves. How far are you going out into the ocean? And what would be, whether it be a sport fish eating fish, you know, what would be your top three of what you'd like to come back to the dock with on Game Changer? My top three? I mean, I only, I, yeah. I really only go for one. Um, I'll, I'll give it two, striped bass and bluefish. Um, and during the summers, so I have my boat on the Hudson River. Um, so it's about 45 minute ride down to the city. So to get the stripers, you go down to the city, um, past this uh, the bridge called the Verrazano Bridge and you hit the ocean. And then you're by like Coney Island, whatever. So sometimes it's two hours and, and it, yeah, it takes about two hours until we could start fishing. And um, yeah, what a blast we have out there. It's, it's, they, you know, they're about 30 pounders, the stripers, 20, 30 pounds. And it, it's a good fight. I mean, your forearms are burning out there mm -hmm. and they're great eating fish. I don't know if you've ever had it, but oof, they're good. So yeah, I love it. I'm going to have to come out. What are you using for bait? We use a uh, live bunker. Okay. 
Yeah. And so. it is a good fight. I would put it, you know, for me, because I'm going to get you down to Miami on the elusive swordfish hunt. Now, at 17, 1800 feet, Pesh, you know, it, it's really, you're rolling the dice. You, you hope you're going to get a sword, uh, which I love to eat. But you could, you could get a bluefin tuna that Brocky yeah. McGinn got before. You could, get a, you could get a shark. You could even get a, a, a giant squid. I mean, yeah. you're talking 17, 1800 feet. It's insane. You know, we're, we're not going down there with our scuba gear to look around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, hey, I, you know what? We're going to do that together. Because in yes, every sir. sense, you are my brother. I want to take a couple questions from a few fans. All right? Okay. Now, I have a picture that I'm going to uh, run with this episode from Jacob H. And it's with you, Marty Man Mardenuk, and TVR made a brief appearance. You guys, before the season, were going to an <laughs> NC State tailgate, and you saw it. <laughs> Them playing a drinking game. I mean, I've seen the picture. It's a great yeah. picture. What drinking <laughs> game were they? First of all, what drinking game were they playing? Oh God, you know what? I can't remember, Trimper. I got no idea. It was it was a good it was a good time. We all had a few drinks. Uh, it's a big blur. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, well, I, I've got a great picture of that. But he, Jacob, asked a, a very good question. You know, you, you, Hurricanes fans love you. Raleigh loves you. What would be your favorite memory with the fans that is an off ice memory? Um, I will never forget um, after beating Washington, coming back from the plane and, and seeing all those fans outside just uh, cheering us on. And that was, you know, I, I still get thinking of right now, I'm getting goosebumps. Um, I still get, th- you know, goosebumps thinking about that. And um, just to see the passion in the fans and, you know, and the support, it, it just, it, you know, makes you play that much harder. And it's little things like that, that, you know, that get you, can get you to the next level. And, and luckily in Raleigh, we, we have those, those type of passionate fans that, that a team needs. Did you, with what you've done, cause you saw the building, you know, when you first broke in where, you know, there were a lot of empty seats yep. and now I'm sitting there thinking about you coming on the ice at home for the, the wins in this cap series, beating the Islanders. And, you know, even the two games at home against Boston, if you had to compare what it's like on the ice, you know, in those previous buildings to now, I mean, can, can you even hear yourself talk when you're trying to call for a D to D pass out there now? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, not really. Um, it, it's just remarkable how, how, it's, how much it's changed. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll never forget in the playoffs in that Washington game. Um, I've actually talked about it with Sebastian a few times, once or twice. And, I remember he's trying to tell me to play on an offensive zone draw <laughs> and you know, we have, we have certain names, nicknames for the plays and I couldn't hear him. And I was like, what? He's like, he's like, Oh, whatever. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't read it. So I just, I remember he went, he went back to me and I just shot the puck. Cause I, <laughs> I didn't know what we were running. It was amazing. He didn't give you the owl look of death. Did he? You no, know, thank God. Cause he couldn't hear, he, he knew like he couldn't hear himself <laughs> either. So. <laughs> Oh, but that's okay. We're going to have to deal with sign language here moving yeah. forward. That's what the Kaniacs have done. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> that's outstanding. Um, this next one, uh, no, we talked about uh, your favorite Ranger growing up. Uh, this comes from Caitlin Clark, who's a big fan of yours, as, as she a big fan of TBR. Um, we know what a great hockey player you are. What is something you're terrible at? I'm not a good basketball player. Um, I mean, as much as I want to be, you know, when we get to shoot hoops when the NC State, you know, when they got the the gym out there and we get to kind of go and mess around and shoot hoops, I'm not good. I'm just not. And it's something I wish I was good at, but hey, it is what it is. I wasn't meant to play basketball. So if you were to if you were to be tapped to deliver the goods on that uh, great NCAA tournament surge, TVR Duncan, would that have caused some nerves for the great Pesh? Oh yeah, I probably would have missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, and so I'm going to give Caitlin a bonus question. What is your go-to pregame meal? Because are you part of this um, Jade Future Flurry? Congratulations to Hayden and yep. Jade. They've been in, become engaged. Uh, boy, I'm a big fan of Jade's. Do you yep. go to? Uh, is she cooking your pregame meal these days at, for home games? Yeah, you know what she. Uh... 
before I got hurt, obviously, um, she was cooking for me, Trevor and, uh, and Hayden, obviously we would go over after our skate and, and she'd cook up gluten-free, uh, pasta, um, with a bunch of greens and, and it's really good, uh, like chicken parm. It was like chicken cutlet. It was, Oh man, she's a really good cook. I got to give it to her. I got to give a shout out to Jade for cooking an awesome pregame meal. But, um, yeah, just, I try to just carbo load. I, I eat a ton of pasta. Um, we kind of have a, a method. It's, a, it's, you know, me on the road, it's me, that Jacob, Jordo, even Willie and Trevor, um, you know, eat till you puke. And uh, we stuff our <laughs> <laughs> we stuff ourselves so uh, so much that you know you know you know you're not doing a good job until you feel like you're gonna puke. So, well, you must really hit the can before your pregame nap. Oh, uh, yes, speaking sir. of pregame naps, <laughs> to you at home and on the road, like in a, in a playoff game, you know you're you're a cool as a cu- cucumber kind of guy in my observation and estimation. Do you typically, does it vary whether or not you get a good nap in before the game? What's, you know, like how much do you get? Um, usually, yeah, I usually sleep for like an hour to an hour and a half. And that's pretty standard. Um, you know, sometimes I don't sleep, but I'll just have an extra cup of coffee. So uh, it's not the end of the world. Have you ever had, and I could tell you about a dream I had day of game seven uh, in Washington. Have you ever had a particularly memorable or freaky dream during one of your pregame naps uh <laughs> um no not that i can remember to be honest i don't really remember my dreams i mean I, everyone everyone tells me you, you dream every time but i don't i'm not really one to remember them so i gotta tell you this so my mom who just walked in off camera she came in she's a good luck charm for you guys in the playoffs yes, so she came in the night before game seven, Washington, we went out, had a nice dinner. All right. So I elected, uh, my prep was done. And so I elected to take a nap early in the afternoon. Oh, I mean, I slept, I mean, like a baby and I had a dream. You know, I, you know, I was like, Oh man, the canes are down and Aho scores a shorthanded goal and he come back and oh, win. Wow. Oh yeah. No way. <laughs> so that, so that night on TV, John Forslund goes the opening comment, you know, at the top of the open of the show, he goes, Hey, Trip, what do you think? And I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, I, <laughs> the, the, the Canes got, they, I just had a dream this afternoon. And the thing is, you know, I, I think that represents getting to a point. You mentioned that you were nervous your first game against San Jose 10 years ago in a game seven. I never would have said that. I would have thought you can't say that, but now I just let it fly. Yeah, you know, and 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 I and I think that that's probably, and I think it only comes with experience. That's the best way to go. Yeah, it's classic. What a dream! What a dream coming to fruition. Oh. Um, let's get another one here, pal. Uh, well, let's see if I've got anything. Um, oh, this comes from uh, ho- this great hockey name, Howie Handorf. All right, he has he said now your rehab is done, but. What would you say have been other than you're an angling expert? How have you kept busy other than, you know, obviously what you've done with your rehabbing and now being in the gym, getting ready? Um, yeah. Um, obviously the gym, whatever. Um, the, the biggest thing I, I, I'm always on the boat whenever I can, when it's nice out. Um, I play some video games, just watch TV. Um, but yeah, my, my, my main thing is, is going on the boat in the summers and that's, that's kind of, I keep busy. Yeah, I'm going to get out there and uh, I'm going to get on that boat and uh, you know yeah, give you a couple angling tips. You're going to come down, join the elusive swordfish hunt. Yes, sir. Uh, I will. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not guaranteeing you. I'll be a game changer for <laughs> game changer. <laughs> hey, Pesh, you do it as a band of brothers, and um, you are going to come down with um, because you are. I'll say it now. You are an ultimate guys guy. Thank All right. You, so Thank that's you. A, that's, means a lot coming is, from I mean, you. Yeah, okay, that's a Mount Rushmore type thing. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I and it's meant a lot to me. You know, here I am, this 46, almost 47-year-old analyst, and you guys keep me young. I love this group. If I do a bench interview with you, I know you're one guy, Justin Williams in this category, that I, I could pretty much talk to you the whole warm-up. What do you do? Pesh, you are a great competitor, a, a terrific Terrific competitor. 
how would you describe your mindset and warm ups and where do you, and this is a talent, it's a gift. Where do you, where and when do you flip that switch? Um, yeah, you know what? I, I'll probably, I probably, I keep it loose for warm ups. Um, when I get in the locker room, I, I dial, I, I dialed in. Um, you know, I just think a lot to myself on, um, you know, what, what I need to do tonight and, and, and what other players to key on and, and how, you know, some of their tendencies and, you know, are they big, are they fast? You know, do I have to be wary of a guy on the fourth line who's going to try to run me through the boards? Um, it's just all those little things. I just kind of, you know, mentally get engaged and, and then, you know, by puck drop, I'm, I'm usually ready to roll. I just mentioned Justin Williams. I'm going to ask a humorous question that comes from him first. Okay. And then we'll ask a serious question. <laughs> the humorous question from JW is ask Pesh why he eats so many Gatorade bars <laughs> in the locker room. <laughs> What's the background on this, Pesh? You know, yeah. you know, you know the, the dairy bar, grilled cheeses <laughs> and bacon, now the Gatorade bars. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, they're for one, I, you know, they're my Gatorade bars. No one else can have them, even though the team provides them for us. But, uh, yeah, you know what? I like the taste. Um, even though that people say they taste like cardboard, I don't think so. <laughs> um, yeah, I usually have one or two uh, at least the game. To be honest, in between periods, I'm always just shoving them down and try to, you know, get some get some energy back in me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's like that's a good question. <laughs> well, he always seems to ask the good ones, and yes, he does. You know that, you know his what I hope is a future hall of fame career. We don't know if, if he's going to play again, hopefully he does. Um, Justin Williams, how has he influenced your career the most? Um, why is he a lifelong friend? Um, why is there only one and will always be only one Justin Williams? Yeah. I mean, I, I could go, I could spend all day, you know, talking about how great he is, um, on the ice, but you know, what, what gets me is just the type of guy he is. Um, he's taught me so much to be honest with you, just, just seeing, I mean, just observing what he does and, and how he prepares himself. It's it just, it's not, it's remarkable to be honest. And he taught me personally, you know, that being average isn't okay. And, and you're not allowed, you know, you're tired, tough. Like we play a lot of games it's not an excuse to, you know, to, to not be your best every night. And, um, that, that's something that I think that, you know, he, he taught all of us. Um, I think we, you know, it's not okay to be okay. Um, and, and before Justin came in, I think we kind of did think it was okay. And, you know, we were subpar team and, you know, I remember if we lost, it's like, eh, whatever is what it is. But, um, now it's when we lose, it's okay. What happened? Like, why did we lose that? This is not okay. We need to turn it around. And it started with him. Um, he's just such a good hockey player. Just such a good guy. Um, he's one of my all time favorite guys I've, I've ever played with. And yeah, I, I do consider him a lifelong friend. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, I feel it, I feel, I do feel honored to, to have the privilege of playing with him for a few years. And um, if he retires, I wish him all the best. Um, if he doesn't, even better for us so i i typically almost always actually let whatever goes on in the locker room stay in the locker room as well it should be but pesh you just talked about when you dial it in after warm-ups you know willie when i've been you know doing bench interviews with him i mean I, I'll, I'll turn to him and i'll say you know, Willie, what's the point of the warm-up for you? You really have no interest in it. <laughs> yeah, so, he, stare, he stares at guys, yeah. <laughs> he stares, he looks down at the other goaltender. <laughs> yeah. whoever's in, but he does, I, I could sit there, you know, like certain guys like Aho, I need to get him out of there in 20 seconds because yep. right down to the second, he's got things he's got to do. So when, do, what's Willie like? When does, when does that switch happen for him? you know, because he becomes as fierce of a competitor as you're, you'll ever see mm -hmm. when, you know, I could talk to him about, you know, what's wrong with his pitching wedge during warmup. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's kind of similar to me. I think right after warmups, you know, he dials it in 
and you could tell it's just it's like a different it's like a different Willie turns on, um, which is amazing. Um, he he really turns turns the tide and um and it's almost like when you know he is so much everyone has so much respect for him when you see him you know getting focused it's almost like okay this is now like this is our time to get focused and our time to to turn it up um and it just goes back to you know his leadership and 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 how he's just a role model to a bunch of us that's a terrific terrific inside the room answer um pesh you got anything for me just miss you that's all stripper I miss you. I miss you in a lot of different languages. I'm going to be on Game Changer, uh, sure. angling in the New York area. You're going to be down on the elusive swordfish hunt on audio. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. It's uh, uh, with those seven engines. Oh, it's going to be wild. <laughs> Center Council, Hydrosport. Yeah. Um, you got to tell your buddy that I, I want to drive it. Oh, God. Oh, I'd he'll let to. you. Oh, yep. I'd love that. He'll let you. Maybe, yeah. you know what? One day, hopefully, we catch a swordfish uh, early, and then I'll take you down to a wonderful spot called Gilbert's in Key Largo. Nice. Yeah, and that's a nice drive. That's a nice drive on, on the adios. Um, I'll let you go and, and, and bid you adieu until we get together on the water. But I want to tell you, Pesh, coming from you, it means a lot, as we're still really in the first inning of digging in. You've said some nice things about the content of our podcast. Um, I want you to let us know however we can get better, but I want to tell you that um, it's been really uh, flattering to hear you enjoy the show as much as you have. Yeah. Thanks Trip. I, I do. I, it's an awesome podcast. Um, I, I love listening to you and obviously, you know, you're one of the more entertaining guys I know and I consider you're a good friend. So um, it's awesome to see what you're doing. Ash, um, but it's not a reach for me at all. I mean, it's, it, 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 I'll say this big, big shout out win Saturday afternoon in Calgary. You and I may have walked out of a BAMP spot together, <laughs> arm in arm yeah. in the snow. And you know what? It was long <laughs> before then that I had determined you were a lifelong friend. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Me too, Tripper. Oh, thanks, Pesh. And thank you for, I mean, he's been, he's been a loyalist to digging in. Right back to the pilot. Well, we thought a pilot episode was Shane Will to throw Willis, but it went so well that uh, we turned it uh, from pilot to live. So, Pesh, it's great to finally have you on the show. I'll see you on the high seas shortly. Now I bring back in uh, my partner, our, our very fine producer, Adam, the Admiral Holtzman. Admiral, you got any questions uh, from our big digging in enthusiasts? Lots and lots of questions came in, Trip. We had to narrow them down, but the one that came in the most – what does it mean for you to dig in? Oh, well, the neat thing, uh, you know, for me is I, I don't, there are all sorts of different ways that you can dig in. Like right now I've got to get the physique uh, into a Rod Brindamore zone. And the only way I can do that is to dig in on the bike, dig in on the weights, probably most importantly, dig in in nutrition because you can't outrun a bad diet. Um, I would consider it to be, um, nothing in what you do is on the perimeter. Everything is in the trenches, uh, whether it's, it's your family, whether it's, you know, not just being a fair weather friend, you know, Frank Sinatra, who I would have loved to have had on the show, um, said if the need is a pest, um, that is probably one, if not the only thing, one of the only things Frank was ever wrong about. Uh, you dig in. You dig in with your friends, first and foremost with your family. Um, that's what I loved about team sports is you dig in for each other, and you're never successful doing it um, by being on the sidelines, um, being on the perimeter. Um, preparation is a big part of it because you can't execute if you're not uh, the finest version of yourself. Rod Brindamore talked about that uh, when he dug in. You can't be a passenger and dig in. Life's an action program. So this is, this is the very crux of why I wanted to name our podcast this, because there's not one form of life. If you want to be, in French, la meilleur, the best, that doesn't require digging in. Because if you don't dig in, you have no chance um, to be there, um, like I said, the best version of yourself. Admiral? Well, 
It's funny, you talked about Rod's uh, workout plan and how you're going to join him uh, as being very fit. MCAT Mia, E-M-C-A-T-M-E-A, asked, will you be sharing your Rod the Bod workout program with us so we can join in with you? Uh, the answer to that question is I'm considering it. Um, you know, right now I have uh, just been, you know, really doing the, the the Peloton, and I mean digging in deep on the Peloton. I actually had this conversation with Rod a couple of days ago. The bike is so hard because if you're competitive, there's no such thing as a joyride. My bike in Raleigh is a pre-core. You can sort of loaf that thing if I'm watching a hockey game. You can't do it on the Peloton. Uh, I would be happy to figure out a way with you, Admiral, to, to share those. Um, I do weights here at the house as well. Again, you know, I know that uh, I've been connected with Taco Bell. Um, I'm a big McDonald's fan. But, uh, you know, if I'm going to deliver the goods, and, and Rod just said to me, I'll be, I'll be very blunt, because he's been a part of, uh, with his, his beautiful daughter, Briley, who's very, very talented, of uh, designing our upcoming uh, digging and merchandise Roddy said, Trip, if you're going to have credi credibility with the digging in fan base, you're going to show up, have to show up to camp with a body composition that's pretty darn close to as jacked as the players. So the only way that I can do that, 90% uh, has to be the diet. You know, I hear I'm talking about being an angler, the elusive swordfish hunt. I'm going to have to eat a lot of fish. I'm going to have to lower the carbs. It's going to be GCL, good, clean living, to be able to truly um, – deliver on my promise. I would like to video it uh, as much of it as I can. I feel I've really set the tone with a good foundation. And now it's about momentum. You know, Rod always said to, that, uh, you know, cause I called him three days after he won the cup. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm working out. I said, are you a, are you a moron? He said, you just won the first cup in your career. You're not enjoying it. He said, trip. It is much, much easier to maintain condition and fitness than to get out of shape and then start it all over again. I'm learning that the hard way, but I think I've successfully turned the aircraft carrier around. Think about that. All that goes into turning an aircraft carrier around. And then once you're cruising, I mean, you're digging in really effortlessly. So I'd like to show you um, as much of it as I can. I'll put, uh, I'll put the creative juices together. The one other thing I would say um, is that uh, my brother, my nephew, Andrei Svechnikov, is now here in the Detroit area with his brother, Evgeny, uh, who uh, will be, I think, a big part of the Detroit Red Wings this year. Um, I would consider working out with uh, those two uh, workaholics uh, at the gym about a half hour from here at 5.30, five days a week, 5.30 a.m., that is. Uh, I do that. Uh, I might be coming into, uh, coming into camp even uh, more muscular and more fit than Svechnikov and Brenda Moore combined. One more here from a friend of the show, Jordan Martinuk. Looking back at last episode <laughs> with Alex Kalorn, where did you get those slick shades? <laughs> oh, he knows. He, well, I happen to be with you, Marty, man. Um, okay. You know, just talked about this with Pesh. Um, you know, I'm 46. I'm going to be 47 in December. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't have a midlife crisis. I mean, I don't, you know, Make no bones about how old I am. But after some, some lean years in Carolina, um, not with the, necessarily the character of the group, I, I, I'm not saying that, but these last couple of teams have been so special that, um, you know, I've really sort of bonded with the guys. They let me do my job as their analyst, but there's a bond there. There's genuine friendship. So because of that, I made a decision. Uh, after the Boston Series Eastern Conference uh, Finals a year ago, just over a year ago, to jump on a plane on a Saturday with uh, none other than Jordan Mardinuk, Justin Falk, Brock McGinn, and Peter Pietro Morazic. Um, but I had spent some time with all the guys the night before, um, so I really packed lean, um, and we decided to go to the pool when we got to Miami, and I had to really outfit myself. So I got, uh, you know, a swimsuit, uh, some flip-flops, uh, a T-shirt, and the nicest purchase were those shades. And those shades were uh, Dita's. I believe it's D-I-T-A. Some of the sharpish, even Morazic. Even Morazic said, my God, Tripper, those are some sharp shades. Then I was out here on the lake here in, uh, in Michigan um, 
and it's it's one of these places where a bunch of boats tie up and something happened it wasn't anything i did knocked the shades off they went into the water and it's very murky water i looked around and tried to find them because i love those shades and they weren't giving them away uh, i looked around for the better part of an hour um and just couldn't find them so i was able to locate um <laughs> Now I've got not just a backup set, but three sets uh, from a store in Beverly Hills, California. So Marty Man, um, you were with me when I, I bought the first set. That set some, is somewhere out uh, on the, the floor of the lake. Uh, but now I could afford to lose two and I still would have a third set. I just hope for more trips to Miami with uh, great friends who know to, how to dig in like you. Well, thanks once again for those terrific questions. Keep them coming. Uh, keep your honest feedback, rating and reviewing us. Um, this has been a fun episode. Uh, maybe the most interactive one we've had yet. Great to hear Pesh talking about the new country auto group. And let's hope that he, that he'll be behind a Porsche sled, 10 and two on the wheel very soon, Pesh. And for those of you that want to get involved in new country, uh, whether you're in New York, dealerships there, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Florida, um, BMW, Mercedes, Peshwans, Porsche, Ferrari, Lexus. It goes on and on. I encourage all of you to go to newcountry.com. Of course, the maestro of new country, Jared the Nooch, the Shattuck St. Mary's magician, finding the back of the net, Cantanucci. Uh, so until the next time, we'll be back with new country very, very soon. Thank you so much to Brett Pesci for digging in. We're digging in with Trip today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today.